I think it's primarily being used for knees but also uh, for hips as well. Uh, this uh, patient was operated last week. As you can see, this is uh, quite a routine uh, looking total knee. And uh, in fact, uh, clinically, this is a lax knee. In fact, we had a lot of discussion earlier about a lax knee. I'll just show you what I mean. It starts off with obviously putting the pins on the tibial side, where I usually put them about two inches below the tibial tuberosity. And on the femoral side, I put the pins anterior medially. And then I put it through the range of motion for hip registration. This is what I see on the screen. And uh, in a matter of uh, 15 seconds, that is done. And next step is obviously all the bony landmarks, registration, the ankle and the uh, knee. In the, on the femoral side, we register about 30 odd points and similarly on the tibial side as well. So we go through this process of uh, landmark registrations. Uh, the various uh, points are taken uh, both on the femoral side and then on the tibial side as well. So these are the landmarks being registered on the tibial side. And after these registrations are made, uh, you know, we uh, register what is the native uh, anatomy. You can just see it is 11 degrees virus and 13 degrees of flexion deformity, but the knee is lax. Although there is 13 degrees of FFD, there is still a significant laxity. As you can see on the lateral side, there is 24 millimeters. Now our aim, target aim is 18 millimeters. The magic figure we have in MECO is, you know, we are aiming for 18 millimeters of gaps, both in flexion and extension, medially and laterally. That is what would, what would give us the balance gaps. So this is the registration of the native anatomy and then I put curved osteotomes uh, both medially and laterally and st stretch the uh, collaterals and registered what uh, medial and lateral gaps look like. And this is done in flexion and extension and this is the kind of screen that we get on the screen. Now important to note what we are seeing on the screen. The bottom right side is what you should be concentrating on. You can see on the lateral side in extension that's 24 millimeters and uh, in flexion is 22 millimeters. That means it is significantly lax on the lateral side. Uh, I'm, my aim is 18 millimeters. And then uh, what uh, comes next uh, is uh, what is uh, virtual balancing. And at this point, because uh, you know, we have the implant positioning already set here, uh, uh, next I would be doing my virtual balancing. And uh, balancing is done first by as you can see, it is, uh, you know, I'll get a tibia up four millimeters here. So you can see the tibia going up and the lateral gaps are reducing now. Then I get to 18 millimeters on flexion. So that is where I stop. Extension gap laterally is still 20 millimeters. So I distalize my femur by two millimeters. And uh, when I do that, I get my uh, lateral side at 18 millimeters. Now next step is uh, how much tibial virus that I'm going to accept on, uh, 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 you know, the, the, within the limit. So it, it depends on what kind of philosophy that you accept. So if it is adjusted mechanical alignment I'm going for, my routine is actually to give two degrees of tibial virus. And by giving two degrees of tibial virus, you can see my medial gaps also start uh, increasing to an extent. So what I'm uh, left with here is, uh, in, on my virtual balance. Remember, I have not cut anything at the moment. I have planned my implant positionings here and uh, I have adjusted my lateral gap to 18 millimeters. Medially, I am 13 and 14 millimeters. Now, next, I will go to my implant positioning and implant uh, sizing and see what I can do, whether I, there is any scope for reduction osteotomy and get my medial balancing right. So, this is where I am looking at my implant positioning. I check my trochlea. Trochlear matching is important because it is shape matching, uh, especially important in MECO. That is the beauty of a CT based system. I make sure that it is not hang overhanging medially and laterally. Uh, similarly, on the posterior condyles, I uh, have to be matching here. And on the tibial side, you know, if you see on the right side, there is uh, femur size is four, tibial size is four. And uh, with size four tibia, I don't have much scope for uh, reduction osteotomy. So I will downsize tibia to three. And then I will see how much scope I have for uh, excision of the medial osteophytes and some degree of reduction osteoid. Now I'm reducing my tibial size to three. Then I will lateralize my uh, uh, tibial base plate and see how much bone I'm left on the medial side. And I can see that there's significant bone that I can resect on the medial side that is going to give me my uh, medial lateral balancing. So by doing this, uh, I, I get my uh, uh, balancing uh, perfect. 
Next, the last thing I check is what my anterior cut is going to be uh, like. You know, make sure that I'm not going to be uh, having any notching. So when I make sure there is a notching, next uh, is all uh, bony cuts that are, uh, you know, robotically assisted. Now, this is the screen that I'm looking at. In fact, because the knee was on the slightly on the lax side, I have distalized it by one millimeter further on the femoral side, and I'm aiming for a 17 millimeter gap so that I actually end up uh, uh, getting the full uh, extension. So next step is, uh, you know, all uh, bony resection looking at the screen. I'm not looking at... Uh, uh, I'm not looking at the femur at all. I'm uh, looking at the screen and cutting. This is, you know, feather touch actually. I'm not, uh, I'm just pushing my saw with uh, almost with fingers. And there is no uh, uh, saw weight felt or there is no pressure on me at all. I should not be fighting the saw at all. I, he's just giving me the plane. I'm just, it's my job to push and make sure that I'm not cutting anything that I should not be cutting. Obviously, if my saw goes onto the patella, it's not going to know that. So I have to make sure that I don't do that. So that uh, anterior cut is done. Next will be the chamf anterior chamfer. And uh, this is uh, basically uh, virtually, you're not looking at the bone at all. You're looking at the screen and cutting. And uh, you know, it's, it's really, uh, because it is CT based, the graphics are you know, far superior. And in fact, uh, uh, occasionally you may, if you force the saw to go into bone, it will show you red areas, whereby it will tell you that you have cut 0.5 millimeters extra or excessive. And that can occasionally happen, but uh, I don't think that really matters much because you can always correct it very easily. Or it could be a very small area where you have 0.5 millimeters extra bone resection. So that anterior uh, chamfer is done. Now I'm cutting. You can see the haptic boundaries that are set. I mean, haptic boundaries are important. I'm putting a medial homens to prevent injury to the MCL, but that never happens because my, my saw is not, never going to go beyond the haptic boundary. And uh, you don't even need any uh, homens protection uh, because haptic boundaries are set and the saw stops actually if I try to push uh, the saw beyond the haptic boundaries. Next is the tibial cut. Again, I'm putting the spike there, but you know, uh, majority of the times I don't have any spike there and uh, I'm happy that it's not going to go on to the MCL because saw will stop if I try to push it beyond the haptic boundaries. So that is the way tibial cut is done as well. I have to obviously make sure that my saw does not go into the patella tendon or uh, you, know, uh, you know, if I cut uh, obliquely, I should not uh, be, you know, transecting the patella tendon. So that care, obviously, one has to take. So uh, at the end of uh, all these bony resections, next is going to be uh, the distal femoral cut. It's uh, just a different uh, attachment for the saw. Is a distal femur cut uh, uh, and uh, the posterior chamfer. That's all that remains now. So uh, this is the distal femur cut on the lateral side. And next would be the posterior chamfer. Uh, that is, you know, again, the pushing with fingers, you know, hardly any pressure being applied on that. So after all the bony resections are done, uh, all that remains is excision of uh, posterior osteophytes, uh, if any, and clearing, and uh, then uh, putting the trial components on. Now. Uh, now here there was uh, no hyperextension, so I'm excising all the posterior osteophytes, but I did not do any soft tissue releases posteriorly. And next step would be uh, doing the trial reduction or tibial preparation, uh, doing the reduction osteotomy and the trial uh, reduction. So I've prepared tibia here. After putting my uh, brooch in, I'm going to knock off the medial osteophytes and uh, do that uh, small amount of reduction osteotomy. That is going to give me that medial, uh, you know, release the and that would get me my balance. So my uh, medial side is being resected using a reciprocating saw. So next would be the nine millimeters of trial poly going on. And this is uh, ultra congruent. Uh, so this is not posterior stabilized, this is ultra congruent. And this is triathlon uh, femoral component going on. and then would get it out in extension and check uh, the medial lateral uh, balancing screen. And that's in full extension and then in flexion as well. So uh, we'll look at what the screen that we are uh, looking at. Now this is the screen that I'm getting on trial reduction as you can see. Uh, and this is actually uh, where we started off. If you see on the left hand side is where we started off. 24 millimeters in extension laterally, which we've got now to 17. 
uh, you know, inflection is 18 and is beautifully balanced uh, on the right hand side. So this is uh, basically what from 8 degrees of virus we got back to 1 degrees of uh, virus. So we've got our balancing right, we've got our alignment right. So what uh, remains next is, uh, yeah, so what remains next is the pulse lavage, cleaning up everything and uh, uh, the, the cementation. And uh, again, you can check again at the end of the implantation as well, you can check the same screen. So practically, uh, that is the end of the surgery. So it, it gives you the satisfaction of virtually planning your, your uh, uh, gaps and you know balancing it before you have done any resections. One thing you realize that you significantly resect much less bone on both tibial and femoral side depending on the laxity and that is the post-operative x-ray of the same patient.